This is about age. You know, there's people sometimes that express themselves the wrong way and say they're over 40 years old, over 50. How do you feel about that in society when you have a platform and you act, still act like a child and you're over 40 years old? I mean, that shit is funny. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think at a certain age, you really start to show your insecurities. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when you're young, it's all right to make mistakes, but you're supposed to learn from them. Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to evolve. So to me, it's almost like if someone is doing the same exact thing they were doing 20 years ago, if they're doing the same thing, I mean, you know, there's just a lot to be said for that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know, because you might be doing the same thing for 20, 20 years, but people are, are, are moving forward and, right. and you're keep, that means like, so let's say you're 20 years old when you start and the people that you're around are 20 years old, that circle is going to always have 20 year olds in it, but you're not going to stay 20 years old. Yeah. Now you're 40 years old and you're around 20 year olds. You're talking about a 16 year old just, going back to the sandbox. It's, it's just like you being got a, to evolve and grow. It's just nobody wants to be the old guy in the club. At least I know I didn't. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was young and I would see older people around younger people and I would usually laugh at that older person. Yeah, we did. And we would call them a ringer, the old man in the club. Ron Isley. Or get up out of here. You know, like, you know, you'd always be like, it's always, it was always a get up out of here thing. Like you old, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like stop. Let us be young. Let us let us make our mistakes. Right. You know why you come in trying to act like a boss around young people? Go act like a boss around people your age. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't know. I guess when I look at someone that's acting a certain way at a certain age, I just feel like they have a little more evolving to do, a little more reflecting to do. You know, there's some insecurities that need to be dealt with. Like I was very insecure at a younger age, which is why I was loud. I hadn't done nothing yet. I knew I was gonna do something, but as of yet, yet it was all talk. It was just confidence. But the reason why I was over projecting is because I was bringing more attention to myself because I hadn't done nothing. But the crazy thing about it is, once I became really confident, once I really became secure within myself, all the front and stop. Once I became secure knowing that I really believe in myself and in my abilities to make money, that's when you notice I stopped everything. No more fronting, no more making money off nobody, no more moving when I don't want to move, no more coming outside all day. Like to me, if you come outside every day, you're really insecure because you think people are going to forget about you. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you got to be outside every day, all day, every day, every red carpet, pictures all day. You know what I mean? Like, why are you so worried about if people don't think about you that day? You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's, a, it's a fear. Right. You know what I'm saying? But And I know that fear because I used to be in that game. Yeah. I used to be in that I need to be outside every day game. I need to be hot every day game. I need to be cool every day game by doing stuff every day game. I need to not be in my house every day game, not be around my kids every day game. That wasn't an everyday game that felt good to me. That's an interesting thing because I heard that fame is like a drug, is it? From what, you, from what you've experienced being... For certain people. You know, for certain but people. But see, my point is, once you become secure about it, you no longer care about what people think because you know your product's good. You no longer feel the need to be outside every day because whether people thinking about you or not, when you come back out with some good work, people are gonna be there. You don't really care about what people think so much. Right. You're not so worried about your future if it's based on if people like you or people don't like you. Once I became really secure in myself, it wasn't no more fronting that needed to be done. Yeah. But what it did make me know was when I see somebody fronting, I could see their insecurities. Right. I know what they're worried about. I know ultimately what they're trying to amass. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Until they do something, they're going to fake it till they make it. And that's what everybody kind of does. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And what I also notice is the more you have, the more secure you are, the more you don't really feel the need to be seen. You don't feel the need to be to be heard. Take yourself off the radar. You just, just become destination. Relax. People gotta come to you. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But that's a real security. Being able to not have to move and worry about, you know, what people think or when people see you. To me, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just to me, it's just the quality of living for that or standard that I set for myself. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But again, you can see people's insecurities when they overcompensate. When they're too loud about too something, loud. that means they're worried about the exact opposite of that. Exactly. Niggas act way too tough, they usually be soft. Niggas act rich, usually be broke. You understand what I'm saying? Niggas that act smart, usually be dumb. Be dumb. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. it's just mad. 
you know, there's an occasion, like, you know, me, I'd be like, damn, I'm definitely a guy that talks a lot, but I think I'd be backing this shit up. I've done a lot, you know what right. I'm saying? I could talk a lot. I'm confident about it. It ain't proof, really so much over. Yeah, there's proof of concept, so it's really like, it's not arrogance anymore. It's confidence once you've really done something. Yeah. It's, it's not egotistical if you've really done it. It's egotistical when you're doing it and saying you're better at something that you know you're not good at, and then you're being loud about it. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying. I mean, at least that's just how I size size things up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. The more you do anything, you're gonna get better at it, and the confidence is gonna build. Period. That's in everything. Well, it's like a muscle. The yeah. more you work your muscle out, the stronger you get. Right. The more you practice at anything, the more it just becomes nature. It just becomes a rhythm. Natural. It just becomes natural. Right. You know what I'm saying? What's happening? This is the big homie Kenyatta. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you haven't already. Hit the notification so you can get an alert each and every time our hip hop motivation videos come up. And also, thank you for your support. Peace and blessings. Listen, for mad years I walked around with my neck looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar. I had to do something about it. What I found is that a razor bump is nothing but an ingrown hair that curls into the skin and causes the skin to become enlarged or inflamed, making it look like a bump. But it's not a pimple. It's a hair that grows into the skin causing inflammation. You have to remove that hair and then you have to use yourself a nice skin astringent, something that can do the trick, something that can get rid of those razor bumps. So what did I create? Bump Assassin organic skin astringent. To order your own bottle of Bump Assassin, go to hiphopmotivation.bigcartel.com. When are you writing a book, Dave? I'm writing, I also have a book, you know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, did, Wait, what's, it, what's it called? It's <laughs> called Culture Vultures. I did, if you, have y'all been looking at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, absolutely. With the, so, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written, he wrote it, we, we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways, so it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. This is serious. The fashion game, Culture Vultures the book. Okay. In business, Dame is a guy that's worn many hats. Yo, you can either think of a master plan or get mastered by somebody else's plan. Check it. As a barber, one of the most important life lessons I learned is to never do anything without seeing the ending result first. Before I understood the value of seeing results, I used to waste a lot of time sometimes doing double work because I didn't have a vision of where I was going. Then I started taking consultations more serious by not even turning on my clippers until I had a clear understanding of the result my client was planning to see. And in turn, it became easier to achieve the style they wanted to see in half the time. Real talk, the most successful barbers and beauticians are the ones that see the ending results before they start any service. Write, Write this, this down. Write this before down. making any moves, know where you're going. Deciding from thoughts of being sick and tired of something, starting something, or admiring something can be the emotions that fuel change. Because write this down. Write this down. Emotion leads to passion, passion leads to action, and action leads to results. Word up. Word up. Word up. Question, what's the number one killer of dreams? If you said fear, you're wrong. Fear is on the list, but it's not the number one killer. The number one killer of dreams is comfort. The comfort of a good paying job or in an active relationship can seduce us for many years into the rhythm of accepting things without making any moves to change. Further numbing us into a state of zombie-like passiveness. Write this down. Passiveness will cause your dreams to pass you by. I see you grew.
grooving right now. Yeah, I was yeah, in my groove. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daydreaming. I'll start thinking about something. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 